Let's go to week six, baby. Hell yeah. It is revenge week. It's crazy. So we have three offensive coordinators facing their old teams. We have Sunday night football. We got Brian Dable and the Giants facing the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen, who was mentored by Dable. We got Monday night football is Kellen Moore, who was the Cowboys offensive coordinator. Now the Chargers offensive coordinator facing Mike McCarthy, who kind of maybe shift him out of Dallas. But I don't think this is the game of the week. But to me, the story of the week entering this week is we have Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots going to Las Vegas to face the Raiders, whose head coach is Josh McDaniels, who served half his life, basically, under Bill Belichick, and the Raiders quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo. Belichick, this is literally like master versus apprentice. This is weird. Yeah, it is. It's like Star Wars. And also, Mark Davis literally made the Raiders stadium to be like the Death Star. (laughs) <laughs> and like he calls right. it that. And so the masters, as DK would say, and the kids and D- Danny Kelly would say down bad. Mm. Indeed. Patriots, <laughs> down bad. Patriots, Bill Belichick's coming off the two worst losses of his career. Down atrocious. Yeah. Down atrocious. Patriots have been outscored 72 to three in their last two games, which is also down atrocious. Not horny. Wa- just, not just horny. Sad. Yeah. <laughs> just horny sad. to be clear. Sad was, and horny. Happy tissues or sad tissues? <laughs> <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Uh, that should yeah. be a segment. Uh, on this, <laughs> Pat, Pats are last place in the AFC East, and if the Patriots lose this game, they'll be one in five for the first time since 1995, which is the year I was born. Wow. And here, I, I feel like for this game, this is like tuck rule full circle. The Patriots dynasty started t- like more than 20 years ago with the Patriots beating the Raiders in the playoffs in the tuck rule game. And now 20 years later, more than 20 years later, you've got Belichick playing versus McDaniels and Jimmy Garoppolo, who he wanted to replace Tom Brady. DK. My question for you, if the Patriots lose this game versus the Raiders and have this full circle tuck rule moment, do you think that we will look back and think of this as the end of the Patriots dynasty? I don't think this game will be viewed as the end of the dynasty. I think honestly, if, if, you know, five years from now or whatever, if the Patriots kind of crumble from here and and Belichick gets fired, which apparently is actually still an option um, that could really happen. I think it would just be when Brady left. That's when we'll probably view is it. Is the Patriots dynasty not already over? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's like this this is sort of a new iteration of the Patriots. Um, he's like three games under 500 after Brady left. Like it's over. Yeah. Right? I guess it's more like when the villain at the end of the movie, like they go under the water. And right now there's still like bubbles <laughs> coming up though. And this game's like, all right, yeah. now there's no more proof bubbles. of death. Yeah. The other thing that uh, I, you may have mentioned it, sorry if I if you already did, but like Jacoby Myers coming back and revenge against oh, yeah. his former team. This, oh, this, to sure. me, this is maybe even more of a revenge because Jacoby Myers clearly pissed off that the Patriots didn't re-sign him. Um, and I've seen reports, you know, out in the out in the world that he that Belichick's like, oh yeah, we tried to re-sign him, and and Jacoby Myers' side is like, uh, no, you did not try and re-sign me. And so I think <laughs> this is another. Sort of, and it's ironic because the Patriots, like by far, worst position group is receiver. So it just doesn't well, make any sense that they wouldn't re-sign him. It's crazy how bad I think the Raiders are, and then when I think about their offense versus the Patriots' offense, I think they're like ten times better. I'm like, right. man, the Raiders are a bad team, and I'm like, well, Jimmy Grubble's all right. Yeah, Devontae Adams Devontae's is great. Awesome. Oh, Josh yep. Jacobs is an awesome running back. Oh, Jacoby Myers is a really solid number two this year. Oh, they got a good young tight end. I'm like, God, are, are they going to kill <laughs> Josh <the> Patriots? Jacobs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The the Patriots offense, they're dead last in offensive points per game. They're dead last in offensive EPA per drive. Uh, in fantasy football, everyone's unplayable. Ramondre Stevenson's the 26th running back. He's this behind, is the hardest part of for me. Yeah. He's behind Tyler Algier at running back. And I have to tell you, uh. he's the running back 26. He would if he would, if Ramondre Stevenson was a kicker, he'd be the 26th best kicker. So you could have just been playing a kicker. Well, <laughs> Um, Holy it's, shit. That's tough. Do, well, for, a question about Ramondre. Do you think that it gets better or do you think this is more of just... This is who the Patriots are now. Can it get worse? Now. I was going to say. Yeah, it can get it can get worse. They have three points they in the last two weeks. They can start playing Zeke in front of him, I suppose. I I think you kind of can't play him until it gets better. I know. The the I mean the defense they lost their two best play- players. So Christian Gonzalez, a cornerback, and Matt Judon are probably both out for the season. But the smoking gun of the pay- of Belichick being cooked and like I've resisted it being like oh. But the one thing I'll say because I think my first reaction to the Patriots falling apart was like yeah the GM is probably bad. He's still a good coach. Patriots are the worst special teams group in the NFL. Like he Wild. traded up in the fourth round for a kicker and the kickers missed half of his kicks this year. They traded away Nick Folk, who has not missed a kick this year. Uh, it's just weird. Terrible vibes. Down bad. Belichick's getting say. old, you know, yeah. slowing down. He's lost it. 
Well, I was all right. So I was talking Austin. It. The other, I'm worried about him because the other thing I was talking to Austin Gale about this. Shout out Austin. He works here at the ring with us. He reminded me that Bill Belichick also broke up with his girlfriend. Um, early so he year. really is down bad. They've been yeah yeah he's down bad down atrocious and they've been together for 15 years. He's 71, so he's single now. And Austin had this great idea. We got to get Bill Belichick on the Golden Bachelor. <laughs> God, can you imagine? Can you imagine a worse television program than Bill Belichick on the Golden Bachelor? The funny thing is, I would watch that. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> it would be so terrible, but it would be so imagine, good. Imagine just press conferences, but if they were just like, yeah, no, I really had a great date with Cindy. You know, we had a really good conversation and she's just like. What he should you know? do is he should he should get fired or, or quit his job as the coach of the Patriots and then join the Golden Bachelor. But instead of a bunch of uh, older ladies trying to date him, it's it's GMs trying to make him their head coach. I watched that. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> the golden head coach. It's Woody Johnson just I'm like in. begging him to coach the Jets. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. All right. The other, not quite as titillating as the end of Bill Belichick's career in New England, but probably a way better game is the Chargers playing the Cowboys this week. Mm. Yeah. Kellen Moore. It, it really is. It really is revenge week because and I only learned this just by looking it up. I've never seen Friday the 13th, the movies, because I'm not a huge scary movie guy. But Jason, the, 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 you know, the main villain of the Friday the 13th franchise, he basically is getting revenge. That's why he's trying to avenge his mother's death. Mm. So um, it's all about revenge. Friday the 13th, Jason Voorhees. Just that, that's a fun little peg for us. But Kellen Moore. Playing the Cowboys. This is like when dad doesn't let you take over the family business, so you leave and start your own, and you're like, I'll show you. <laughs> yes. Uh, and Kellen Moore immediately gets to, to L.A., almost at San Diego, and the Chargers are one of the best five offensive teams in the league, just like Dallas was when Kellen Moore was there. The Chargers are hmm. fourth in offensive EPA for drives, fifth in points. Herbert's the number one quarterback in fantasy. And Dak Prescott, meanwhile... This year is statistically having the Going same the season shitter. as Kenny Pickett. Yeah. They're having the exact same season, Dak Prescott and Kenny Pickett. They both have 1,000 yards, five touchdowns, four picks, six and a half yards per attempt, uh. Uh, which is kind of alarming. And uh, if you weren't convinced enough that Kellen Moore was, was, a, was good for Dallas, remember last year, Cooper Rush uh, played five games for Dallas last year when Dak got hurt. Dak got hurt week one. Cooper Rush started five games in 2022. Well, Dak has played five games this year for Dallas. Uh, Don't Cooper say Rush it. and those Don't say it. Cooper Rush in those five <laughs> games last year. One, they were four and one. He threw for a thousand yards, five touchdowns, three picks. This year, Dak Prescott, they're three and two, a thousand yards, five touchdowns, four picks. Uh. So, uh, Kellen Moore, man, pretty good. <laughs> with, with that said, don't you guys feel like what, Dallas has not played a normal game this year? No, and they've run the fewest offensive plays by a wide margin. With the game within seven points. Basically, they're either getting killed or killing somebody. So they never play normal football. In the second half this season, Dallas has run zero offensive plays with the score being within seven points. Zero what? in the second half. Wait. So they have not played competitive football in the third or fourth quarter. Correct. So it's like, we don't I even, this is why I'm crazy. saying you should buy low on Dak Prescott still. Because Dallas hasn't played normal football yet this season. They're either I getting killed with- or killing people. I agree with that. And I also agree with Tony Pollard too, because Tony Pollard quietly is like right up there in the league lead with touches and he hasn't done yeah. much. The, the Cowboys last year were the best offense in the entire red zone period. And this year they're one of the worst, like their red zone offense has been atrocious. And part of that is Mike McCarthy, but also I, I think hope they won't. Well, not hope. I kind of hate the Cowboys, but I think they'll get better. Um, but they just, it's been a very classic McCarthy offense just stalls in the red zone. Pollard is an interesting story this year in fantasy. So I don't want to give Heifetz credit here. It pains me, but I think the leg injury that he had actually does matter. He's been so inefficient. He's been wildly inefficient, like literally one of the least efficient running backs in the NFL so far. He's been saved by, by volume. And actually he's a positive regression candidate because he hasn't scored as many touchdowns as he would have been expected to score based on his usage. So he's, he's actually probably going to do better um, going forward in terms of fantasy, but if you look at any of like the broken tackle metrics or elusiveness metrics, he's been bottom three, Dude, basically. So it's, it's that's wild. The, 
I, I will not take credit because I ended up being like, you know what? I'm the only person concerned that Tony Pollard broke his leg nine months ago and everyone's expecting to be explosive. I'm probably wrong about this. So then, oh, well, cause the then we season, all went on Bill's podcast and Hyde yeah, was like, are. he's my favorite player in the draft. <laughs> exactly. So. so I'm not, I'm not taking credit because I, right. I conceded. And by the end of it, we all were like, you know what? Tony Pollard's probably the single best value in drafts. And you know, what's ironic. Tony Pollard was basically this like low volume guy behind Zeke Elliott, who's incredibly explosive. Now he gets the job. It's basically Zeke Elliott. Just getting a ton of touches for Dallas, and he's not efficient. Now they we broke him. Uh, but, I mean, he's he's doing well to be clear, but it's it's shocking how like few tackles he's broken and just how he is it shocking? Like he broke his leg this year. That's I wish I had stayed on that. He really broken broke tackles, his leg in broken leg. It's tough. Yeah. 